the federal spending Borg is eating the country alive, crapping out wars and welfare for migrants, and leaving the people they serve to fight over the crumbs. Fresh numbers came out last week that the federal government spent roughly twice what it took in tax revenue last month, as the federal deficit hit the second highest ever, second only to the COVID lockdowns. Meanwhile, separate data reports that interest costs on federal debt alone are consuming fully two-thirds of the income taxes you pay. So as you tally up the tens of thousands in taxes you're paying next month, reflect on the sense of achievement that two-thirds of that is going to Wall Street and Chinese investors. In short, we are at the loot the treasury stage of the fall of empire, which always happens with paper money. You could argue the surprise is that it's taken this long. So first, the numbers. The U.S. Treasury reported that last month it collected $271 billion, yet it spent $567 billion, more than double. About $224 of the spending was Social Security, Medicare, and Veterans benefits. The other $343 was wars, welfare, and interest on the debt. In other words, what's bankrupting us is the welfare warfare complex. In fact, federal tax receipts adjusted for inflation have been down since 2021, this is very odd considering the Bidenomics miracle. Normally, a rising economy pays more taxes, so it suggests there is a lot of hidden distress that government statisticians are somehow missing. So taxes are down, yet spending has soared 50% since COVID. To illustrate, pre-COVID, federal spending was running under $400 billion per month. Since COVID, it's been closer to 600 this brought the February deficit alone to nearly $300 billion, which is up 13% on last year's grotesque number, and it puts us on track for $2 trillion of deficit this year. For perspective, in 2015, which was Obama's last year, the annual deficit was about $400 billion. Now, it's $300 billion in a month. Of course, the deficit is what's driving skyrocketing federal debt, which is up $1 trillion in just the past 100 days, that comes to an annual rate of $3.5 trillion, which is also known as $28,000 per household in America. So think of it like putting $2,300 on the credit card every month and never, ever paying it off. And that brings us to the interest payments. So last month, Treasury collected $120 billion from individual income taxes and spent fully 76 of that on debt interest. As my colleague E.J. Antoni pointed out, that's not $76 billion for roads, schools, or Social Security. It's just to service old debt. It's the monthly interest on the credit card while they pile up fresh trillions. This is obviously unsustainable, and it's getting worse as the fresh dot debt piles up the interest costs. And next recession, it could balloon past the point of no return. We're not far from the day when all taxes are going to old debt, with all new spending being effectively printed, racking up yet more trillions as the months tick by. So what's next? Brought to you by Unchained.com. Washington has entered the Ponzi financial stage. Of course, they could stop it overnight by slashing spending, but they won't. The 2008 crisis and COVID opened the floodgates, growing the federal beast to cancerous proportions. How will it end? How it always ends. Inflation, mass defaults, and sovereign debt crises. The only question is when. A new episode of the Weekly Roundup podcast just went up, covering Japan's stagflation, American renters giving up inflationists in Congress, and the ongoing bloodbath in commercial real estate. Check it out at petersaintange.com. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.